Good night. Uh, let me just try to control that a bit. Ciao. Good night, good night, everyone. Good night, good night, everyone. How are we feeling tonight? I believe I'm talking to myself. How are we feeling tonight, everyone? All right. Now, welcome, welcome to a night of poetry. You know, we might have a little bit more in this poetry tonight. Uh, my name is Kibwe Copeland, and I will be your host for this evening's proceedings. Tonight, we are going to deal with poetry. We are enjoying the ambiance of the backyard barbecue and grill. Uh, this is a place that, since the first time I was introduced to it, I enjoy coming. You know, the food is lovely. The drinks, the service is spectacular. Um, so let's just wrap back and enjoy not only what we see and how we feel, but also what we hear tonight. So we're going to start, you know, the ball rolling with some poetry. You may enter, yeah. sir. And uh, we are going to hear from a few persons who are poets, some persons who might, you know, be trying to think, it doesn't matter. But tonight is all about enjoying ourselves. This particular event is in honor of the late founder leader of the People's National Congress Reform, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham. This year, if he was alive, he would have been 100 years old. Um, in honor of the Burnham Centenary Committee, uh, we have Vincent Alexander, who's the chair of this committee. I just wanted to just put his hands, just wave it in the sky. Vincent Alexander, just wave your hands for me. You know, we're doing a great job to keep the legacy of Forbes Burnham alive. You know, a man who would have set a lot of foundations that we still enjoy today. So as we honor him and as we honor the art of poetry, you know, I will invite persons to come out and speak. Even if you're not a poet, you could go to Google, pull up something, just, you know, play a part, participate. Even if you want to come and sing a song, or even share a joke. That is all open for this evening. Now, to start the ball off, I'm not going to start with directly a poem or a poetry, but I'm going to just break the ice with some Guyanese proverbs. Um, I actually really enjoy something that DJ Akilo would normally do, whereby he would ask persons, um, <clears throat> he would dictate certain situations and ask persons to say what is the proverb that you would normally use in Guyana. So I'm going to really in cooperate everyone here to give me answers. Are we all going to cooperate with that? Okay now. So the first one, and I'm going to read something to you guys, and you're going to respond with what would be the possible or the direct Guyanese proverb that we would use in a Guyanese settings. So let me read. If 
it didn't work or wasn't successful after all that work time, then nothing else will make it happen. What would you say? What, what, what did you say just now, uh, Vanessa? No, we, we don't have to repeat it. Somebody already, come on, just be repeat that. If rain can pull it, you can pull it. That was the exact response. Give her a round of applause. She was on point. Well, rain can pull, you can pull. My mother would normally say that to me as well. So let me go to another one. Hmm. Let's see. Mm. Okay. So this one I think is very easy. You know, um, I went into my one hand is lazy. So, you know, I, there's something I have to do with two hands. So I need some help. No, that is not it, man. All right, I need help. Okay, I need help holding the mic on my phone. All right, every bit adds up. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to build a house and exactly one one dotty build down maybe i wasn't doing justice in trying to explain the proverb yeah but we got somebody who figured me out nevertheless so give sneak a round of applause come on let's give her a round of applause for participating there good night good night good night welcome welcome mm -hmm. let me see where else do i have mm. I'm taking my time. Yes. So what do we say when we say give credit where it's due? Give credit where it's due. Correct, correct. Give Jackie jacket. Somebody said give Jill your skirt. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> So, you know, you got some easy people there in the room. Very, very easy. I never had to finish that one. That is so simple. Easy snake does bite hot. As again, I said, we just break in the ice, break in the ice before we get straight into poetry. Now, we're not going to challenge you. I'm going to finish with the proverbs for now. And I'd like to say, open the floor for the first poet. Who will grace us with the opening act of poetry? Anybody. Just raise your hands and I set the stage for you. Raise your hands and I'll set the stage for you. Anyone? Are you coming, Trinika? It look like you were. <laughs> so we have someone in a very in a blue dress. Looking all elegant and beautiful. She's short. Her name is Shanika Haynes. Are you single? Single and mingling. Let's welcome Shanika Haynes. Give her a round of applause once more to give us a poem. I'm not a poet, just let know that. <laughs> you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lie. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Could I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my own living room? Just like moon, like sun, with the certainty of tide, just like hope bringing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bow head, lowered eyes, shoulders falling like teardrop, weakened by my soulful cry? Does my haughtiness 
offend you? Don't you take it awfully hard because I laugh. <laughs> Had I got gold mine digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? <laughs> Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I got diamonds at the meeting of my ties? Out of the hut of history's shame, I rise. Up from the path that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling and bearing in the tide, living behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak wondrously clear i rise bringing the gift that my ancestors give i am the dream and the hope of every slave i rise i rise i rise Thank you very much, Nikki. Hayes. Give a round of applause for that one. That was wonderful. 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 I rise. And she said she's not a poet, but she is a good performer. Would we all agree? A good performer. A good performer. <laughs> she got backup singers out. So I don't know who will also like to grace us with the next poem. Shaquille, is that you? Let's give a round of applause to Shaki Williams. Come on. Shaki Williams will come and grace us with a poem. I'm not a poet either. So Shanika, maybe I'd feel I'd feel better. I'd feel more confident if you're here with me, Shanika. Please come. And we yeah, we match into. I know this is um I need to, I need to look deep into your eyes. <laughs> Pour me a drink. That smooth liquor. That one that ain't no good for me. Pass me that sweet cigar. The one that ain't no good for me. Uh, she makes me feel free, but she just ain't no good for me. Deleted her number from my phone, but I couldn't erase it from my mind. One call, and I'm back in her bed. So I dialed it like muscle memory. She's oh, so good, so fine, but she ain't no good for me. She's sweet, sweet, sweet wine, but just no good for me. The forbidden fruit, I took a bite. I loved it. I really, really loved it. But it's no good for me. My drug, I need it. I take a hit. I light it up. But it's just no good for me. I hear the songs you love. I need a hit. A crazy, crazy, crazy hit. But you ain't no good for me. The silly things you do, I want a hit. I need a hit. But you're just no good. no good for me. I ain't no good. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> no. Taxi will tell me why you call a woman up to tell her that she's no good for him, eh? <laughs> but that was the sweet poem. And I think I understand what was not good for him. <laughs> So, 
give Chatty round of applause once more for participating in our poetry night. It's all about having fun. It's all about, you know, using words. You know, when it makes sense, it makes sense that once it sounds good, we can give you a round of applause. How are we going tonight? So are we enjoying tonight? We only had two acts so far. I don't know if anybody wants to come now again. I think my friend here is ready. Are you? Let's welcome. Let's welcome. Let's welcome to the floor. A senior poet. A senior nurse as well. Well, I'll give you a whole life history. <laughs> Come on, give me one applause. Good night, everyone. I would like to do a poem entitled Lyndon Forbes Samson Burnham. Please excuse my voice because I've had a rough couple of weeks because I do host a concert for children on the third Sunday of August. And after that concert, I will take the children on a trip. So I am all the way from Linden. I had to send the bus with them home. And I'm here. So I am real tired. But Linden Forbes Samson Burnham, on the 23rd of February, 1970, we became the first and only cooperative Republican state in the world with our first executive president, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham, taking over from our first president, Arthur Chung. People said he did republic around this birthday so he could be remembered like Jesus and Christmas. Had they known their history, about the 1763 slave rebellion up the Barbies River at Plantation Magdalenburg of coffee and atta that eventually led to freedom from slavery. In the early 60s, we learned words like up and chat. That word race meant race. That word was said by a woman who later became the sixth president of Guyana and plunged our country into a lawless, murderous, drug running, money laundering, and a human state of trafficking, making us being blacklisted in the USA until when led by President David Arthur Granger. That word, Apanja, split a loving people down a racial divide and led to murders, riots, and strikes. <laughs> Ninth day, that is still visible. Strikes that, fa that famous one in the sugar belt that lasted over 150 days. Again, we saw that same scenario returning to Guyana in 1992 and in the early 2015 May, when more than 1,400 mainly young African men disappeared, gone without a trade. Under the PPP led administration, Students with bright futures, journalists and some fathers who were sleeping in their beds with their wife and children were being shot in their presence. Then came the big word independence, moving us partly and shaking off some of the shackles 
of colonization from our former slave masters. Independence had symbols of nationhood. One such the coat of arms, but its motto, one people, one nation, one destiny. Our golden arrowhead, the pledge and the national anthem. He started the race with Dr. Chetty Jagon. He dropped out leaving the farmer from the leader Lyndon Samson Barnum to continue and won the race for independence on May the 26th, 1966. Followed close to his heels with Republic. British Guyana, G-U-I-A-N-A, became Guyana, an Amerindian words meaning land of many waters. Republic meant celebration after hard work, hence the word mastermani, another Amerindian word. Atkinson Airport was renamed to Mary until recently when it was forcefully renamed to what it's now called. So our Amerindian brothers and sisters would not be forgotten. Out of a dense jungle, gave birth to the Linden Suzdike Highway, stopping in its track, our rich car, putting an end to the travel between Demerara and Georgetown Mackenzie. The Sarpat was not there after it was being bombed out. Today, no one was ever charged with that crime. Mackenzie became Linden creating more work for driver. Frostons became GNEC. Sugar, Bokar Sugar, became Gai Tsukum. Demba became Gai Man. Barnum as a man, he made so few, he made mistakes, so few to mention. He was man enough to say he made a big mistake by stopping the train between Georgetown and Resignal and breeding up on Perico. He banned food items like the cut saltfish, making Banga Mary queen of the saltfish pack. We could have been planted here. Then came into being Nari, the Guyana School of Agriculture, where experimental crops were tested and grown on new fertile soil. He introduced the feed clothes and house yourself program in 1976, in which new housing area provided Melanie Damisano, Roxton Barnum Gardens, just to name a few. People were now moving out of lodges and pit latrines, occupying modern living homes with running water and toilets. On the LFS Barnum, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Barnum, known under the table as Kabako, he started the Guyana National Service for children who wanted to drop out of school. Did not end up on the streets, nor graduating in a PhD, in Mali and ecstasy, just to name a few. For a free room clothes and clothes and board at the GNS centers, they planted cotton, peanuts, black eye. There was also a cotton gym at Kimya. They planted ginger and peanuts at papaya. On leaving centers of Kimya, papaya, chamachamari, konawaru, they were now fully military trained, disciplined, and well respected. They were now masons, plumbers, printers, mechanics, electronics, engineers, just to name a few. Remember GMC, where our produce was sold. We had our own pig warehouse squad with our own ham and bacon fa factory. Remember those big brown pigs, Durax? Sonata textile mill making cloth. 
with cotton from Kimbia, the clay factory on the west coast of the West Bank of Demerara, the glass factory at Yarra Cabra. Tapir vehicles were also made here, along with Kalai motorbikes, Greco rangers and radiograms also. Not forgetting Gaikan jams and jelly. What about the family delight breakfast cereal and powder milk and cereal for our baby to be used in our own van serum where made right here in Guyana. Iceberg refrigerators. What about the ideal gas cookers? We made matches at plant and walk. We West Bank Demerara, the lighthouse matches. Remember the lit cup milk plant in Kingston. We also had our own banks, the Guyana National Cooperative Banks. He made NIS compulsory to some people, to the wrath of some people. But I can't wait to enjoy my pension. The same NIS money built a bridge that we cannot pay to walk across that same end of that bankrupt NIS, and we cannot have any increases. There were only Christian holidays, Christians with religious holidays, but he made the Muslims and the Hindus have public holidays too. St. Rose's Bishop, St. Joseph, for all pure girls' school. St. Stanislaus College and QC were all boys' school. LFS Barnum always had a long range vision, so he made those schools become cross schools so that the famous saying, train up in the ch a child in the way she or he should grow, so they should not depart from it. When the school became cross schools, no lusting for the same sex. That was the man, Lyndon Forbes Samson Bornham. I hope I didn't tell you, but I had to put in perspectives the things that I know about the man, Lyndon Forbes Samson Bornham. Because as we go around in Guyana, nothing is being made mention about what LFS Barnum did. And I think that I had a right to bring to the table things that I know that he did. And he will always be the founder leader of Guyana for me. Give a round of applause. As uh, my pen Chubby would say, more than poetry, poor history. <laughs> So, we're going forward, and we have the next poem. It's this poet that, you, yes, it's, it's going to be restarted, not to worry. Shall we give us the volume? We have a young woman here. I don't know if it's your boyfriend sitting down here, but I just want to, it's your friend. Okay, you know, we just got to make sure, because everybody coming, we have to find if they're single, you know, the kind of story. So, um, you just introduce yourself, and you do your poetry. You do your thing. Good night, everyone. My name is Keen Day. I'm a poet, and I go by the stage name Mocha. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so this piece is entitled Women and Men. Women are my sisters. I say that with the most love for their beauty and uniqueness. Women are my sisters. They're not my competition. They're who I'd feel safe with if I were walking a lonely road. They're who I'd feel safe with if they had to be in my home. Women are my sisters. I stepped into a room filled with women I was not intimidated. I was just curious about what I could learn from them. I love her lashes and I love her hair. I love her shoes and I love her dress with the flair. Women are my sisters. 
this does not disregard the fact that men are my brothers, men are my lovers, men are my friends. Even when they're not, this world is nothing without women and men. This world is nothing without you and I. This world would be nothing if we were not here to admire the lilies in the ponds or the birds in the sky. Women are my sisters. Men are my brothers. Men are my lovers. Men are my friends. I say men are my brothers since I've been saved so many times because of them. Men are my lovers. The other half of my bed is warm when it's not empty. That's when I sleep most comfortably because men are my lovers. Men are my friends. The friendship between a woman and a man is less likely to end because men are my friends. So I want to reiterate again that this world is nothing without women and men. Thank you. So I'll give a little round of applause for that. Wow, that was sweet. The world is nothing without women and men. That's true. You know, I don't know if I could see it any other way, but that was sweet. Give me all the parts once more. Come on. So I just want to highlight for persons who didn't know, they got a nice box here. They got a smart name for it, right? Uh, this event again is a free event, but we accept any donation that anyone wants to give to the Boyle Foundation. So when you're feeling generous, you want to go into your pocket, you drop in a green one, maybe you might drop a blue one, but you know, you got to be hey. enough to make green money. Miss Walker, Just thank drop you something into the green box. Apologies for the wait. Sometimes it's hard to get so, the verses up off you. Moving power, poetry, poetry, it. more poetry. Um, I will say, this young lady, she's ready. Yeah, she's coming towards me. Young lady, what is her name again? Melinda. Nice, I love the dress. Ooh. Look, at Poetry Nights, I have the, the good thing about Poetry Nights, right? I had the privilege to flirt with women and blame it on the act. Woman can't vex it me, right? Melinda, you look so beautiful. Talk to the mind. Good night. This is The Average Black Girl by Ernestine Johnson. They say I'm not the average black girl because I'm so well-spoken, poised, full of elegance, a white man's token. You know, I remember my ex-mother saying, I don't know how I was going to react when he brought home a black girl. But I like you because you speak so white. But when did me speaking right equate to me speaking white? Oh, no, no, no. They said I am not the average black girl because the melon in my skin is just a shade lighter than that black girl over there. You know, the black girl over there, the black girl with the nappy hair, the black girls who elbow can skip a day without lotion, whose hearts and heads are filled up with self aid and bottle up emotion. Cocoa brown girls that have to face society every day and be tough because no matter how good this straight in your hair it's still not good enough oh no 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 they say i am not the average black girl you see because the pigment in my skin is just no well, they say i'm not the average black girl because i speak with so much class and i don't have too much i have just enough i don't have too much i have just enough just enough for that, you know, just a little bit of attitude because you don't want to come off as one of those average black girls and come off as rude, popping their gum, shaking their necks because you see those black girls, they get like no respect. But you see, lucky for me, you see, I get a pass because the melanin in my skin matches the brown paper bag. And my father and my brother and the men that I date, pants don't sag. And when I speak, my tongue pronounces every syllable. And the comb part down the middle of my hair is naturally visible. Oh, is it when because I walk into a room full of white men, they are all amazed at the long length of my unaffrage black girl here? 
See, see, they say I am not the average black girl because I corrected the professor when he used the word conversate, converse. The word is converse. And in case you didn't get the memo, there are now eight, not nine planets in the universe. And when you're watching your stocks move up and down, remember in Oklahoma, the first Wall Street was a black Wall Street that got mysteriously burned down. Oh, no, no, no. They say I am not the average black girl. Well, let's flip this script and rewind this shit. Because the black girls that I know, you see, the black girls that I know made 19 trips through the underground railroad to free the slaves, sat on segregating buses, paving new ways. You see, the average black girls that I know, the average black girls that I know were Egyptian queens, like Hassan Usada Chris. Who was controlling dynasties and ruling all armies of men? But do you think the ones that say I am not the average black girl even care? You see, the average black girl that I know, the average black girl that I know were queens. So I'm tired of the stereotype that black girls have fallen into because of Americans' mentality. But I'm not half as tired as Eleanor Baker, Diana Nash, Septima Pointer. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, Miss Fanny Lou Hamer, Daisy Bates, Anna Helchman, Dar Dorothy Height are far more tired than I could never be. So pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliments. Pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliments. It's just the average black girl that I know, the average black girl that I know had courage that surpassed her every fear and fought for justice and equality year after year. So I construct these words, pardon me, as I shed a tear. Because I'm not half the black girl that she was. I'm not half the black girl that they are. See, there's a minor clause. She was out there fighting, breaking, and changing laws. So I bow down to all of my black queens, standing in the merit of their work. And as the world society continuously throws supercilious words onto us, onto me, I say, no, I am not the average black girl. She is who I aspire to be. Thank you. If I know anything with Melinda, she is no average black girl. Come on, give her a round of applause once more. That was sweet. That was sweet. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Chum, chum. So, uh, poetry, poetry. It's a poetry night for those who just came in. This poetry night was organized by the LFS, Lyndon Forbes Samson Bonham Centenary Committee, in honor of uh, the founder leader the first executive president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Today, if he was alive, he would have been 100 years old. So we just want to honor him, his contributions towards Guyana, and we know of many. Uh, we had a poem that took us straight into a lot of history. I hope you heard it. But tonight is all about utilizing your creativity, your art, your poetry, whether you want to read from a phone, from Google, or you wrote something. I don't know if there's any other poem I want to call. Vanessa, are you ready for me? I see you smiling. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. You know where the closet he comes and graces with the poetry. This is a poet. You know them? I'm not a poet, I just read it. You know the poet. Okay. Okay, good night, everybody. So this is one that I actually wrote. I don't know how I'm supposed to go after the young lady that just came. <laughs> Feels very mediocre, but okay. <laughs> her heart has been broken. On her mind, she's hesitating. She's meditating, struggling to work. The fuse has died. The switch has flipped. Her breaker tripped. She asks herself, why do I fall? Why at all? Last call, broken China. He picks her up again just to watch her fall. Drain the poison out of her system. She's all clean just so he can watch her slowly die again. His game is her reality. Just as he watched her fall for him, watched her dive headfirst into the concrete. It's his sport, watching the tears drop to fill the glass he holds to his satisfaction. 
It's usually this time of night that loneliness hits and she realizes there's no one, no one to share her heart with. So she settles, settles for sharing her bed with someone who will just be gone in the morning, maybe not even a goodbye. The things he sows in the world he reaps from his lover's garden, fruits that poison his soul, spitting his seeds out, the lies that come out of his mouth, swallowing it all up because she loves the rush. The highs and the lows, one day he pulls, the next he pushes like a magnet, but it allows her to feel, and that's what she yearns for feeling alive while dying on the inside. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Poetry, you know I enjoy poetry a lot. Um, yeah, keep it up. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah. Oh, no, don't worry, you can come on when you're ready. So now, I think I'm a poet. I ain't sure. Um, I was telling someone a story tonight and it's a true story. The first time I think I wrote poetry. Yeah, can you see? Oh, right, hold on. Yeah. The first time I think I wrote poetry. You want to do a poem? You want a poem tonight? All right, so you. you got to go somewhere? All right, we give you next. We're getting you next. So the first time I wrote poem, a poem was after a heartbreak. You know, I was a teenager. Thought I knew what love was, find some little girl, you know, me, she dated, and then your break for her. Went home to a computer, had a floppy disk, and I start typing, typing, crying. Yes, a brother did cry. I was one of those. You know, I don't cry anymore, I like. But um, I wrote about four poems until I realized, you know what, I am a poet. So I started to write. So I'm going to share maybe a poem or two tonight. But I want to take my friend who's sitting right here, who's anxious to give me poetry. So let's give him a round of applause as he take this mic and do the best that he can. Thank you everybody for accommodating me here. I appreciate your, your appreciation for me. It makes me feel appreciated. How many times did I do poetry there? Appreciation, appreciated, your appreciation for me. But um, in general, I would like to make it very brief. We all have feelings, and I am not a senior in the acting area. I'm very diplomatic in my performance. So when I say diplomatic, I mean that I'm, I'm dealing with something that is very historic, and I don't even understand it as yet. I'm sorry. It's a history that we are all just studying rat and staff and who is big and who is beneath and who's up and who's low. And up to now, I hadn't really excelled to a certain area where I, where they say you fly out and then you fly back in because sometimes you have to keep certain things a secret because like we play, like we play draft or we play, uh, Kung Fu stuff, everybody wants to challenge you sometime to find out who is the great and who is the greatest. That's not, that is very, uh, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering for words because this is not my type of stuff. I wasn't trained for this. I was, I was trained more to be very competitive. You know, people challenge me like, who are you? Where are you from? Where you got all the intelligence from? Where you got all the information from? You're scaring me. Who are you talking to? Next time I see you, I'm going to bust your head. I'm going to joke you. I'm going to shoot you. And then the next day you wake up, you still got to go back to acting. All right? And then something is in your head. Something is in your head. It's saying, if you don't get it done, I'll show you what will make you get it done. And then when you get that illustration, are you, I'm sorry, I'm lacking words here. But really and truly, my message to all of us is that we should embrace each other because we're all one Guyana, one people, with one nation and one destiny. We all know that Guyana had been recognized of, as the Garden of Eden. Some of us, I'm sorry to all the seniors, I'm a junior. I'm not going to lose my respect for you. 
some of you need to respect your seniors because if you think you make marks and they teach you everything, they still got a few tricks up their sleeves that you would never find out until your last day, until they're ready to say, God bless you, and they give you their blessing. And that's it. So um, apart from that, we all need to stand together, whether it's politics, whether it's cooperation, whether it's teamwork, we all need to use our intellect and our intelligence to embrace change because change is gonna come very rapidly. And honestly, I don't want to be on the streets preaching like, ah, bah, 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 everybody, oh, you're crazy, you're sensible, you're ignorant, you're lazy, you want $20, you want 100 you want 1000 Oh, you great. I, I sweat all of that. <laughs> I sweat more. That's not to make me look good. That's not to make me look good. I got to go home and study my own maths. Sorry for you. I know maybe you see a few things and yeah. So um, coming back to what I was saying, I don't know. I need to take a breed. Can I have a glass of water if that's possible? You need me to sweat for it. Okay. We, we all need to embrace change because what is up there, we already study it and we see it. You understand? You want to hear it? Oh, Lord. How to do that? Alexa. You, you heard about Alexa? She's very intelligent. You heard about all the robotic stuff? They're more intelligent than all of us. Oh, I don't know who is who. Sorry, not me. Not me. Excuse me. They say you talk Macaw. So I don't want to talk Macaw in this place. That is all of the words. I know how to say all of that. I know how to act all of that. I know how. Thank you. Thank you. I know how to act smart and I know how to act ignorant, intelligent, unintelligent. We all know. But for now, we need to embrace this message and share it around that the younger people need to respect the older people. And whatever went wrong, we need to learn forgiveness. Forgiveness is very important. Honestly, if, I, if I'm supposed to die tomorrow, the last thing I want to take with me is anybody's problems or sorrows. I'll take my own burdens with me and fly away. Bye-bye. Sorry. So... Thank you. Before black king, black king basically means black. I'm sorry. That's nice. That is called a heckler. I study that. Black king basically means that you are African. You came from Africa, but we cannot take that all around the world for the rest of our lives. We need to have. We need to have some patience and embrace each other. If not, what is happening globally, we will cause it to have an effect, effect on us here in Guyana. And we don't want that. I really don't want to bring you into to panic and you can't sleep tonight. But you see when the blue light goes up there, that's when the real action start. That's when the real actors sit down at the table and they make some decisions and they say, we're gonna spend 100 million wallets today. If you don't understand that, leave that for the big people from the army. And then they beat some drums. They go boom, 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 ba -dum, boom, boom. Bye bye. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Chop, chop, chubby. Thank you very much. Give that man a round of applause. You know, he, um, when people have things on their chest, sometimes they have to let it out. And that's what we had, right? So thank you very much for sharing that with us tonight. So I know there are other persons who want to say poetry. I might just do one before the next person of poetry. Um, as I said, I am not experienced poetry. I only do poetry after my heart has been broken, right? So um, let, me, um, let me see what I can do. Yeah, it's all a part of life, you know. I, I, I leave leave room for uh, disappointments. 
So, um, I'm alive. Are you guys hearing me? All right. I'm alive. Let me, let me come again. Let me come again. Good. So, I'm alive, strong, healthy, powerful, not doubtful. Innovation, creation under a bright star, supporting peace against war. I am motivation, education, the right medication in the right situation, legs pulled in deep meditation with my, ah, let me restart. In a long time I've done poetry and this one's a bit, um, uh, a bit, you think so? Come on. All right. <laughs> Good. So I am alive, strong, healthy, powerful, not doubtful. Innovation. Creation. I am motivation. Education. The right medication in the right situation. Legs fold in deep meditation. Beyond the stars is my destination. I could be Bob Marley, Mahatma Gandhi, Margaret Scarvey, Muhammad Ali. Anyone that I choose to be, because invested in me is the power to become whoever I want to be. With my eyes and what's priority, for I set my path, not society. For I am in control of my destiny. Are we in control of our destiny? But I want you to see it with your own eyes. And I'm forgetting the words again. So here's what I'm going to do to make it better. And I don't really like using the phone, to be honest. You know how... how and Kish could be a particular part. Don't like using the phone. Since today, man, Shondell, you do me so. Good, so let's go. I'm alive, strong, healthy, powerful, not doubtful. Innovation, creation under a bright star, supporting peace against war. I am motivation, education, the right medication in the right situation. Legs fold in deep meditation. Beyond the stars is my destination. Forget frustration and hesitation and apply fate and aggression. I might be the new Bob Marley, Martin Luther King, Muhammad Ali. Who knows? Because invested in me is the power to become whoever I want to be. With my eyes and what's priority, for I set my path, not society. For I set my path, not society. Over my life, I have authority. Living a life of serenity, peace is what we should fight to acquire. Stop complaining because your time is wasting. Your challenges you start facing. You're too calm, you need your drilling heart in your chance. Your dreams you have to start chasing and start being caged in by what they say or what they think. What feels right or what seems to be the ruined thing. See with your own eyes. I'm not asking you not to take advice, but process it with your own mind. You see, life is what you make it. Your days and nights are what you created. With your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences. And I'm cranking out in this poem yet again. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make something better because I don't like the thing. I need a volunteer. This is called redemption. No, I don't need a man. I need a female. What do you call Chow Pao? I need a female. That is, that is not Keisha. No, not Keisha. It's not spicy if I bring up Keisha. I know I do it. You know. I got to get licks when I go home. So I got to bring up a different female. So any other people who would like to recommend themselves to come and let me say this poem to them, please. Anyone. No, I'm already getting a... Uh, um, Melinda's coming. This is better. So, Melinda, this is a nice poem I have for you, right? So, I saw you one day and I wrote this poem for you. Ah, who are you? Come closer, come closer. This is very intimate. Who are you? I would love to know. All I got was a glance, a little intro. Your name and your number, which I'm glad to know. With my tongue sticking out, tossing from our info. I can see that you're beautiful. Yes, you're sweet. A uh, sturdy young lady, I value your meat. I can see that you're bold and knows how to speak as my eyes were gazing in your eyes deep. I can see that you're not a bowl, cold bowl of pudding. I would say that sweet fruit cake, that chocolate ice cream, swarm and brown nuts. Sorry if it seems that I'm saying too much. 
But as your first impression at open events, my compliments, hence I say with confidence, I'm sure that I made you blush. As into your head, my sweet words rush, should not dress us to fill, or as they say, swell your head with all kinds of stuff. But for all my compliments and for what I know, who are you? Will you permit me to know? From your likes, your dislikes, your favorite color to your favorite TV shows, what makes you smile to what makes you cry? How can I tell when you're sad just from the look in your eyes? How can I tell your mood from the sound of your voice? Allow me to kiss you so you can always keep your lips moist. Sorry again if it seems that I'm attacking, but it's a knowledge of who you are and working hard and tracking. But it still stands and asks you again, who are you and can we meet again? In private, you like kitchen, all right? <laughs> Thank you very much for that poem. That poem is called Who Are You? It, it was actually wrote for a girl, actually. I tell you again, I'm a very sentimental man, very lovey dovey, but I'm not seeing Chubby. Chubby, where are you? All right. So I want to bring this other person to the mic. Um, is she ready? I'm not looking at her, but I told. I'm not looking at her. What if she's ready? Sapphira? Alright. Oh, you're not from the same phone tonight? Why not? Oh, yes. I you me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Former General Secretary of the People's National Committee Forum, former uh, member of Parliament, and trust me, if I should read out his whole history, it's very long and lengthy, but I just want you to give a round of applause for the senior Comrade Arthur Clark, who's also part of the Northern Centenary Committee, <laughs> doing great things. Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model's size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I see it's in the reach of my arm, the span of my hip, the stride of my step, and the curl of my lip. I am a woman phenomenally phenomenal woman that's me i walk into a room just as cool as you please and to a man the fellows stand or they fall on their very knees then they swarm around me a hive of honeybees i say it's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth the swing in my waist the and the joy in my feet i am a woman phenomenally phenomenal woman that's me men themselves have wondered what they see in me they try so much, but they can't touch that inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's we. Now you understand just why my head not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk really loud. When you see me passing, I ought to make you proud. I say it in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair the palm of my hand, then the need of my care, 
but I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I like the collaboration. You know, Shanika said she's not a poet, but she's a good actor. <laughs> so give her a round of applause once more. I don't know who else wants to come and give us another poetry. Yes, yes. More poetry coming, more poetry coming. Yeah. So we got a good friend who taught us the importance of a man and a woman. Come to give us another poem. <laughs> okay, so this is not an original piece. It's just a piece that I found years ago and I love. Let me close those lying mouths, dark girl. You're beautiful. The you that you are is far greater than they told you. The stars can't shine without the night. The fire doesn't burn as bright. Chocolate doesn't taste as right without you. How'd you get that way, they asked. Not remembering that black absorbs the sun, so sun rays in you are one. Sun rays power the earth, so you too know their power. Mother, they call the earth, so you too are their mother. You're strong, you're life, you're beautiful. Let me close those lying mouths, dark girl. They say you're cute for a dark girl. They say if she had lighter skin, she'd look amazing. Dark girl, don't you be hurt. Don't you drop one tear. You have to remember the world that we live in. They used to say the earth was flat. They used to say the sun revolves around the earth. And they used to say a black man was three-fifths of a man. They're just not used to the truth yet, though, girl. My grandmother says what's done in the dark will come to the light. So let them see the beauty that is done in you. Let them see the grace that is done in you. Let them see the strength that is done in you. And I promise you, it will come to the light. But thankfully, some of us can already see in the dark. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Come on, give me more than that. Give me more round of applause. She gives us two poems tonight. That is sweet. That is sweet. Kim? Okay. Oh, I, I know the song like a myth. <laughs> Kim Chung in the house. Let's also recognize Kim Chung um, from the PR department at Congress Place. A long lasting staff. Um, very, um, oh, we have Comrade Clark. You're doing a poem for you tonight. Wonderful. Let's give a round of applause. Oscar Clark here on the mic. Tonight. I am not a poet, and I wouldn't attempt to poet poetry. But I want to say two things. I listened to the poetry from the Linden lady, and I will say that that was a Good history lesson for all of us who had an opportunity to listen to her. And I hope that the younger ones among us really listen to her. Open mic, celebrating the 100th anniversary of a founder leader of the People's National Congress is an important night. It's an important event because we need to remind ourselves. And so I would call what I'm saying reminiscence, reminiscences. All of what that lady said happened in just over 20 years in Guyana. 
Think of it. Just over 20 years, in just over 20 years, from, the, from December 1964 to 1984, basically 1985, born of 1985, all of those things happened and more. And that is why Burnham is the father of the nation. And that is why Burnham was celebrated as Caribbean man of the century. Because the things he achieved in such a short time, taking a colony to Republican status constitutionally and taking a people from the backwardness of colonialism to the forward looking national pride that he, in, he was able to inculcate in them yes. by the time he died is something that still marvels even those of us who were alongside him. Imagine Burnham identified all of those persons who were in leadership of the country. Not only did he identify them, but positioned them so that they could be persons who will guide the activities that he identified them for. And I could name a whole lot of them. But in all respects, in all areas of human endeavor, not merely on the political scene, but in all other areas, the cultural, educational and cultural, the uh, young people. Now the young people of Guyana need to remember that Burnham is the person who as the young lady, as the young lady said, brought them to the fore. And I know this story very well because the very first national movement for young people was established in 1967-68, the Guyana Youth Corps, which has and established the Youth Corps, the first camp was established at Chumachumari, and the lady mentioned it from Chumachumari, which was also mentioned by her. But the Youth Corps was metamorphosed into the national service by 1973. And national service was introduced to an act of parliament. The youth corps was a voluntarily organized thing, but not so the national service. And Burnham explained why national service and not youth corps, because he said youth corps was a voluntary thing and it was free discipline. I said, no, no, no. The young people of Guyana cannot be organized in free discipline movement. They must be organized in military discipline movement because Guyana requires young people to be militarily prepared to take charge of the country. Because this country this country 
seven eighths of which is jungle, cannot be run, cannot be organized, cannot be wrestled, cannot be taken and managed by people who are not disciplined and militarily disciplined because they had to face the Venezuelans in the West. and the Surinamese in the East, but more so the Venezuelans in the West. Because as Barnum said, what you don't use, you lose. And if you are not there to take charge of the land, others will take it. And I see they're coming now. Problems in Venezuela, they're crossing the border, and they're being given what? Land and everything so that they can continue to exercise what has been their, you know, they had been trained from infant days that that part of Guyana is Venezuela. So when they come over now, they come in with the training they had, you know, I don't know how we're going to untrain them and make them Guyanese. But they are here now with us. And in large numbers too. And in that very part of the country where Burnham established the National Service Center at Papaya. And where he said we were going to graduates of national service will be able to get land, establish their families, in that area, so that bit by bit, we will be occupying the western portions of Guyana that remain unoccupied, largely unoccupied, even as we speak. So, Burnham had a vision for Guyana that no one else has even indicated to us no one before him and no one after him. Because when he came on, he said, no, um, they had J.P. Coglan, name you probably don't know, J.P. Coglan from West Demerara, had spoken about putting a bridge across the Demerara River. He had only dreamt and spoken about it, but don't put it. it opened in 19... 1978, 1978, 1977, the Kanji Swing Bridge became the Kanji Bridge. You can, people drive, drive over the Kanji Bridge today and don't know there used to be a swing bridge. And when it was open, people used to lose their flights at Atkinson Field. They used to lose their flights because they couldn't cross the bridge. The bridge was open when they arrived there. And they had to wait until it was closed to be able to reach the airport. And then they had to wait on the ferry too. Well, of course, you got a bridge across the Borbish River now. And as you heard from the lady, the cost to cross in that bridge is several, several, several times more than the cost across in the Demerara Harbor Bridge. And I don't know what the new one cost is going to be because now with the oil economy, maybe the bridge across the Demerara, the new bridge, you will have to have oil money to pay it across. But I don't want to bore you. Tonight is your poetry night. And you, uh, you probably have a lot more poems, a lot more poems to study. But in my opinion, in remembrance of Forbes Burnham, the Caribbean man of the century, the father of this nation, there are so many things that we could talk about. He laid the foundation 
for everything that we are seeing today. He laid the foundation for it and more for what we are seeing and more. He laid the foundation and that foundation is strong. Even though it's being damaged by the present rulers, it still remains strong. As a matter of fact, many of the things which they are attempting to do, Burnham not only spoke about them, did them, and did them better. The one only has to look at the Suicide Linden Highway. It's breaking up now. They said they will do it since 1992. Money was a was approved by in the budget for the rehabilitation of the Suzak Linden Highway. And up to now, this was 1992, you know, when they came into Biltimore. Up to now, the Suzak Linden Highway hasn't yet been rehabilitated, built by Borum. As the lady said, you used to go by steamer, and now you go by road. So all the things that she said, you know, can be added on. And you can think about it. If you, the more you think about it, the more you realize that Burnham had a vision and he had a plan. A plan for the young people. A plan for the women of Guyana. A plan for Guyanese in general. How we will progress from one stage to the next. As the country progressed from colonialism to independence, national independence to republican status polit uh, constitutionally, so also and politically, the establishment of local democratic organs and the local government system involving many more people, the constitutional uh, foundation for the local government system, which is there and which all you have to do is Put the bone, put the flesh on the bones. It's all there. As a matter of fact, it's not being implemented at all now. As a matter of fact, the people now don't want to have anything called local government. They really don't want local government, you know, they don't want a thing called local government and giving people power. The power must inherit only the people at the top. They are the drivers, movers, and shakers. People at the top, not why the people at the bottom, they will get the crumbs, but the people at the top run the place. And that is what we are seeing today. Burnham said, no, no, the people at the bottom, that is why he established regional system. Having regional councils and having other local government councils and all of that come along. So basically he had a plan and a, and, and at every stage of the plan, it was people-centered. The people, the people, the people, the people. Where are they going to be in this plan? Burnham had that plan. And in every stage, as I said, there was the involvement of people. He never thought that anything could, could happen for good, without the involvement of people. And so tonight, as we observe his, this occasion as part of the celebration of the centenary of his life, I think it is only fit and proper that we should recall some of his exploits. I mean, internationally, what he has done for us internationally. I mean, I've not mentioned things. That, even in the Caribbean, we're talking now about, we're talking now about getting people to come as workers in Guyana. They want to import people. For them, had called for the importation of people since he was in, in office. He brought in the West Indians from London, from the Caribbean to come in and, Occupy land along the Suzdek Linden Highway. He did 
because he recognized the importance of having more people in Guyana. Guyana didn't have enough people for its development. Since then, not now. And if you go along the Suzette Linear Highway, you'll find many people from the Caribbean. Many, and, if, and even before that, you'll find people in Region 7 and Region 8 and so on from the Caribbean brought into the country at the time by the Kabaka because he recognized the importance of peopling the country with people who are like of like mind. They had the same experience. People in the Caribbean. If you want to bring in people now, you want to bring people from Asia or from somewhere else. Oh, Burnham wanted the people from the Caribbean. And that is why he said that Guyana was the home for CARICOM nationals. The home. Any CARICOM person who wanted to come here, Guyana was welcome them. So, you know, he established and got involved with the non-aligned movement internationally and became a leader in the non-aligned movement. I hear uh, President uh, Ramaphosa now referring to the non-aligned movement even at his meeting of the BRICS meeting that they're having now in South Africa. He referred to the non-aligned movement and said that South Africa is a proud member of the non-aligned movement. But the non-line movement actually had its rebirth in Guyana in 1972. Okay, Carrie Fester. No, no, let's talk. The cultural aspects. He brought in all of the people from the Caribbean here to demonstrate that we were all one on stage, as we're doing tonight in poetry, and you know. All of that happened. And when you go in in a festival city, you see Navy Street. And you see this street, and you know, all from the Caribbean names, because all of the Caribbean people were encouraged to come to Guyana. So tonight, enjoy your poetry night. Have a good night. I have been here since six o'clock, and I think it's time to go. <laughs> Come on, give us the crack around the class. We got poetry, we got history. You know, it's just never, there's never enough history. You know, we always have to learn about beautiful Guyana. And for this particular event, we didn't poke Sam so far. We still have the box here for persons who are feeling generous who want to drop some money out to the pocket. You know, oh, um, man, that put a donation inside. They said again, it's a free oh, event. Man, you know I'm a performer right now. Are we enjoying tonight? Me, dude. Are we enjoying tonight? Oh, All right. man. They even call me. For no, I know. We just have like a few more poems before we just um, go to some light music and persons can just enjoy each other's company. Um, let me just see who has. Shaq has a poem. Melinda has a poem. Um, put. Don't drop one those say, Yeah, keep it up. Who's man? Yeah. Linda has a poem. Who else has a poem for me tonight? Vanessa has a poem. So there were three poems so far. All right. So who will come first? You know, before you all come, right? There's a poem that I wrote a while ago. That I don't think I I, I can say in its in its entirety, but I just do the start of this poem. Um, a little part of it. And the reason why because I think I've become a politician, so certain things I don't think I could do this entire year. This poem is called Something Inflation, and that's the important word. And use it to it, this internet a little bit. Are you hearing me tonight? Everybody got cool at me. Are you hearing me tonight, everyone? Are we still doing poetry tonight? This poem is called Sexual Inflation. And um, I'm just going to give the first part of it, and I'm going to cut it and then get it like an intro to the other poets. So, feet 24. 
Dim Light, Dilupu Decor. Slow music, some of soul, followed by jazz. French wine poured into each other's glass. Strawberries to bring out the flavor. Paul Beans were intrigued by his sexiness, the slightest touch of body tends to shiver. Eye contact locked, lips trembling, body craving, thoughts misbehaving, the sensitivity of her body is so amazing, the muscularity and slender cut that he has is so mind teasing as they got closer to each other, enough to breathe each other's ear. But the connection is so strong, for she can already feel herself dripping wet from her tongue, for his boxes seem to have come alive as full contact is made and the lips collide. As they passionately groove into the mood, and he trickles his hand down her skin, which is so smooth, to say stop, to be rude, or maybe a threat. We have nowhere for me to stop yet. Let's move on, Melinda. Come on, come say some poetry. Melinda! <laughs> Hope you are ready. Hi, I've never done, I've never said this poem before. So please give me grace. This is This is a dark time, my love, by Martin Carter. I want to say this poem in honor of, you know, what happened and why the poem was written in honor of Burnham's death anniversary. I want to use this poem, my, this poem to honor him. This is a dark time, my love. All around the land, brown beetles crawl about. The shining sun is hidden in the sky. Red flowers bend their heads in awful sorrow. This is a dark time, my love. It's the season of oppression, dark metal, and tears. It's the festival of guns, the carnival of misery, and everywhere the faces of men are strained and anxious. Who could walk in the dark nighttime? Whose boots of steel trample down the slender grass? It is the man of death, my love, the strange invader, watching you sleep and aiming at your dreams. It's a dark time, my love, by Martin Carter, the Guyanese poet. Give me. Thank you very much. And that poem was done by Martin Carter, correct? And anybody who knows Martin Carter, he was very close to Burnham as well. So let's go with the next poem coming from Shaki Williams, I believe. Or Vanessa. Yeah, music. Let's 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 have something in the meanwhile. Um So the next poet is getting themselves together. While they do that, Shaki, you ready? I don't really have a poem. I don't really have a poem, but I think a lot has been said about uh, Forbes Burnham. And while I can't say much about Forbes Burnham because I'm not of that era, I think I can read uh, a quote uh, at least two quotes, and so the first quote goes, it was in the first uh, anniversary of independence. It goes, a year ago, Guyana became politically free and independent. She assumed, she assumed the right to make her own decisions on what ought to be done or what ought not to be done within her border. Since then, hers has also been the right to decide what course she would take and to state her views and opinions positively in the fora of the world. As we celebrate the first anniversary of freedom, it is our duty to take account of what we have achieved or what we have failed to do, to note where we have done well, to note what we have done well and what we ought to have done better. And there's another quote that goes, consensus is something you have if you cannot have agreement. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaquille. I like that you're not a poet, but you give us poetry. So I think we got about one more poem. Vanessa, are you ready for us? Who else has something for me? Who else has something for me? Oh, my bad. 
Seven. You ready, Vanessa? All right. This one is called Spare Me the Good News. I can't tell my good news. They swallow it and they spit it up. Like bitter bile, they spew it. Like waste, unlike what they consume. They can't stomach it. They can't fathom it. Just why? Why are you telling me this? They cry. I don't want to know of your promotion. Spare me the good news. You fall flat on your butt. Ha 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 ha. They laugh. But when you rise up, like the heat creating a hurricane, oh hell no, they say. Spare me the good news. She started smoking today. They listen intently with a big smile on their faces. Unclean heart's front door. She quit smoking today. Why are you relating this to me? Spare me the good news. Is that all of the news you bring? They ask. Let me ask you one little thing, they say. How come Keisha never got a wedding ring? Keisha's getting married. They say, oh, hell no. Spare me the good news. <laughs> a man broke in the street. They laughing. Now he got a house and a car. They're still searching for the bad news. Just like the old films, they develop the negatives. While laughing, they turn and they say, spare me the good news. They can't get it down. They stress. They can't sleep at night. Because my good news just don't sit too right. So they fuss and fight and wait for me to blow a fuse. Otherwise, they say, spare me the good news. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. So I like that. Um, I like that everyone came out and gave poetry tonight. Um, as I was saying again, if you haven't done it as yet, if when you're stepping out or stepping in, there is a box here that we're seeking donations, you know, for the Bottom Foundation towards the Bottom Centenary Committee. For persons who didn't hear me the first time, this event is hosted by the LFF, the Linden Pope Samson Bottom Centenary Committee, in memory of. Lyndon Forbes Samson Bottom, the first executive president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Uh, today, if he was alive, he would be 100 years old. And this man is someone that we all know about. I know in politics, it's a lot of controversy and that, 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 that. But anybody who had the privilege of having free education from nursery to university with other man like Forbes Bottom, Anybody who drive the Suzak Linden Highway went to the culture center. Anyone who enjoys Diwali, Pagua, Iluazo would um, honor the man Linden Pope Samson Bordom. Anybody who was a part of your core national service, who knew that we had a car that we actually made. We spoke about it earlier in the poem, the top here. Anybody who is happy to be an independent Guyana, 1966, May 26th, Guyana became independent from British rule. Anybody who recognizes or cooperates Stafford would recognize and honor Lyndon Forbes Samson Boyum. So tonight is all about LFS. Tonight is about you, the poets, you, the persons who came out here tonight to enjoy the poetry, to cheer on, to, of course, support the bar, eat some food, drink and some cocktails or some hard liquor, whatever it is that you enjoyed. Um, we know there are persons who are being viewing us online. Thank you very much for being a part of this, even though we're not here presently. You are here giving your support virtually. Just want to thank everyone. At this point in time, it's some more laid back. Um, if there's no other poetry, if there's no other poems or no other poets, we're just going to enjoy light music, eat some more, drink some more, right, and enjoy the rest of the evening. So, thank you very much. And yet again, the box is still here. I can feel something dangling, but you know, we will approve of more. Thank you very much. Okay, yes, I was the best of knowledge. Um, let me see, where is it? I just want to acknowledge Miss 
Mr. Edward Thomas. Where is Mr. Edward Thomas? He's at the ETH meeting. Okay, so you just want to acknowledge Mr. Edward Thomas, who is vying for vice chairman of the North American region, NAR. And just want to say bye bye. Do enjoy. Thanks for the donation as well. Mr. Edward Thomas, uh, we just want to acknowledge him, who's not here, but um, someone said of his regards that he would have been here if he wasn't in another, in another engagement. Pardon me? His wife is here. So, Mistress Edwards, nice to see you. Waving in the back. Um, we just want to acknowledge him as well from the North American chapter of the People's National Congress Reform. They're here tonight to enjoy some sweet poetry. Thank you a lot for your presence. So, we could now go back to the music and enjoy the rest of the evening. Love you, love you, you. 